Okay, let's talk about doing custom tips or using probes of various lengths uh, or various diameters. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Microscribe Utility Software has built-in calibration that helps us to utilize various custom tips. So we can go into this icon, uh, which is all the way to the right in the bottom corner, and it'll bring up a word menu that uh, utilizes three different functions. For the default tip or the master tip, we can use just default tip and everything will be as normal. Uh, to utilize a probe that maybe we have a fixed known offset, or we know what the difference is gonna be from the shoulder to the center of the ball, we can put in that offset, such as if we were going to put in a one inch extension, we would know that we want to move this offset one inch, so we could check this radio button and then put this information in. Now keep in mind offsets are inverse or the opposite of uh, the measurement. So if we were to, in to put a one inch extension on this probe or extend this probe out one inch, we would put in an offset of negative one. Or if we were to put in a probe that had a smaller offset, we could just put in a positive direction. So smaller is positive, larger is negative. More common is to use a custom tip. Say we don't know exactly what this difference is going to be. We can uh, then use a custom tip to do that. Uh, if we already have one defined in our library, we can just pull it from here. But since we don't have anything defined, we'll go ahead and define a custom tip. So we're going to redefine or overwrite. So I have an eight millimeter ball that I'm going to make a custom tip for. So I'll put eight millimeter and we just simply read the direction. So it says place in the home position with the default or master tip. So we will change the home position with the microscribe. So this is a sixth axis device, so we'll go ahead and bring the sixth axis into rotation. Now, caution, do not hit the white button on the back of the device. You've already homed the device, so you do not want to press that button at any time during this exercise. So it says place in home position with the fault tip. We'll go ahead and hit done. So next is switch to your custom probe and place it back in that home position. So we'll go ahead and pull the master tip off of the machine. So we'll go ahead and pull the master tip off of the machine utilizing a small temp wrench that we have here at GoMeasure 3D and be happy to provide for you. So we'll use that tip wrench and unscrew the master probe. We'll then get our 8 millimeter probe and we'll go ahead and screw that into place. And use our tip wrench to snug the probe into place. So, as it says, we want it back in the home position, so we'll rotate it. Let's go ahead and rotate our 6 axis. Again, we're rotating it as looking from the ceiling to the table in a counterclockwise means at least 360 degrees and we'll line up the hash marks and then we'll bring the base of the microscribe into position. Again, do not hit the white button on the back of the microscribe, but instead come over and press this button to say done. So now that it wants us to collect some data, so we'll take the microscribe, we'll take the hand switch, we're going to come into our fixed tool calibration fixture, which gives us a nest or a place that we can place the stylus tip. And then we'll press the button once. We'll just move the microscribe and we'll collect 20 points. So, now that we're done, we can 
place the microstripe in the nest. And it'll say that it saved custom tip. Here's our save option. This is the, the direction of offset that it created for that particular tip. So if we say save custom tip. So now that it's saved, let's look at our, let's go ahead and create an origin. We'll say okay. And let's go ahead and bring it down and uh, we can create an origin custom frame. Let's do one on top of this block. We'll say OK. So now from the readout, take it out of scan plane so it gives us a dynamic readout. So from the readout, we'll look at our information. And you can see that we're clocking z-axis. It's giving me a three to four thousandths deviation in the z-axis. We could come over here and see how stationary we are. And we're pretty stationary for this exercise. So that tells me that the tool's been compensated correctly. All right, that concludes doing custom tips.